Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to Sexy Nerd Science, Season 3, Episode 13. Lucky number 13. Lucky number. Lucky. Yeah. It's because it's everyone else's unlucky number, and we don't believe in that crap. It's my like Ouija boards. <laughs> it's my, I mean, 13 is my favorite, uh, my favorite number, so it works. There you go. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we've got a special podcast today. Um, we've got our Sexy Nerd of the Month, Andrew Heath, on today. Andrew, want to say hi? Hello. I mean, he said, hey, everybody, with us. Yeah, he I, thought we, were, I thought we were past true. that. We were already past the I just the want them to know. <laughs> they need to associate your voice with your name because <laughs> if they're just listening. This is me. Then, yeah. Because they're going to be like, man, did Josh like do two voices today? I, I don't quite know what's going on. <laughs> it, would, it would be very Josh-like to do two voices. Um, all right, guys. So uh, we're, we, we're just going to jump into it here. Um, or you know just uh get on with the sexy news um and with that we're going to talk about andrew and uh and everything that he does um so uh andrew you want to tell us a little bit about uh about what you do yeah i am a artist slash graphic designer i uh do a lot of freelance design and i mainly specialize in uh, pop culture artwork and travel the country and sell artwork at conventions very cool very cool um could you tell us a little bit about how you got started yeah i uh i've been a artist slash designer for a while i worked at a greeting card company for three years as a corporate greeting card company and then a uh, convention in town, Lexington popped open and I was like, Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe I can make some stuff and, you know, give that a go. And it went awesome. And it kind of snowballed from there. And after a year I was able to quit my job and then just kind of ride this full time. Very nice. What, uh, so how do you move from greeting card company to, you know, selling stuff or, or going to conventions like you do? Well, the greeting card company, it was just a job, you know, it was, it was one of those things where I got I lucked out and I wanted to do something in design and I found it, applied, got it. And like I said, I was there for three years and it was a small company. So you could kind of see the business side of everything. You know, I learned a lot there in that sense. And then, I mean, I've always been a fan of pop culture and it was just a great opportunity with the convention in town. Cause like I had never heard of it. I had a friend who said that, you know, they did this for a living and I was like, I might give it a try. And I mean, there was no real jump into it other than just the being something local that I could do. Nice. Um, so I, uh, kind of was, uh, perusing your, perusing your site and everything. And, uh, and I just want to say, first off, always beautiful work. We've, we've seen it Thanks. a couple of the cons. Um, uh, what was what was the the first one? Do, do you remember your first drawing, or the first one that you sold? The first one that I sold, yeah, was probably Back to the Future. Uh, I have a buddy; he's a friend now. He was actually my first customer ever, and he's a huge Back to the Future fan. So, if he sees anything Back to the Future, he has to get it. And I remember the doors opened at ten thirty. Well, I think it was like 10 for VIPs and then he's just kind of walked around by himself and he came over and bought something. And I mean, we've been pretty good, pretty good friends since, but yeah, I think back to the future and maybe Star Trek he bought also with that. Two cool things. Two cool things. Uh, I hear a little bit of like Southern in your voice. Have you grown up in Kentucky your whole life? Yes. Oh, that's I try cool. to hide it. Obviously, I guess I'm not doing a good job. No, <laughs> but, you're good. Uh, yeah, I grew up in Western Kentucky. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Kentucky. Uh, Murray State University around there. and Probably uh, Louisville. That's the only place I'm familiar yeah, with. Yeah, that's, that's central, well, north, northern central Kentucky. But, uh, yeah, we came up to Lexington for school, and we just kinda, we've been up here for about eight years now. So you say we. What do you, what do you mean by we? My wife. Okay. My then girlfriend, now wife. Then girlfriend, now wife. Yeah. Very nice. My wife. <laughs> I noticed that too. Um, 
so I kind of was curious as to um, like when you draw, we, we mentioned earlier, I asked if you do like commission work at the mm -hmm. cons, um, what medium, like, I mean, do you use like, and a lot of people lately are using like iPad pros or uh, Microsoft surface tablets for mm -hmm. drawing. Do you do any of that or are you just pencil and I use this mouse and that's it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I draw so a lot. Uh, I used to draw a way more than I do now. Uh, Cause like I grew up with 2d art and painting and stuff. But then once I got moved to the computer, I got really lazy and like, I mean, you can do a lot on the computer. So I stopped drawing, but I'd say within the past, like two years, uh, especially with all, a lot of my new stuff, I've been drawing a lot more, uh, depends on what the subject matter is. I mean, a lot of the, what I do is very shapes, you know, shape based, simple shapes. And if it's that, I'll do it all on the computer, but if it's a little more complicated, I'll draw it out first and scan it in. Very nice, very nice. Um, we talked about uh, you're going to go to Planet Comic Con with us as well, correct? Yes. So definitely look out for, for Andrew there. Um, what was your best con you've been to? Maybe either by selling or just your favorite one you've enjoyed? Um, one of my favorite ones is the... Uh, Probably Wizard World Chicago. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wizard World. They get a oh yeah. They kind of get a bad rap. I do fine with them, but like the Wizard World Chicago show is just so big, and there's just so much there. I always have a good time. I can usually do a lot of shopping there. But as far as personally, like good for me, uh, Dragon Con in Atlanta is insane. So my best show ever is uh, actually Motor City Comic Con. Oh, yeah. Come yeah, on. there you go. It's are you coming up to that one? Yeah, I'll be up there this year. Oh, we're going to – me and Josh are going to be there. Oh, That'd nice. Be cool. it's, it's my best show ever, but Dragon Con doubles that okay. all the time. So, like, when, when I talk to people – because, you know, I have a bunch of buddies who do this. They ask, like, what's the best one? What's the best one? I'll usually say best convention, Motor City Comic Con, but, like, Dragon Con's my best one overall, but it's, like, this weird other beast. You know, like you can't even compare it to anything else. It's insane. We have a lot of friends that I think go to Drag Comic Con, but I don't think I've ever been. Josh? Um, so, uh, like, Dragon Con from, I mean, it's something I've always wanted to do, but it's always over Labor Day weekend, and I'm a mm -hmm. college student. So, like, classes start that weekend. So, like, I know there's no way I can go to Dragon Con, have fun, be back in Nebraska by Monday morning ready for class. Like, it's just not going to work out. Yeah. Um, because Dragon Con is a big party con. Yeah, it, uh, it's that's crazy. definitely a destination con for both Josh and I. Um, we're always we're like, and Kansas City isn't for me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But Kansas City is not like as big of a party. Like, yeah, we might go to the Marriott and meet some people afterwards. But like, uh, Dragon Con is like twenty four seven. After seven p.m. You shouldn't have anyone under 18 in the hallways because yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, me and my buddy, uh, I've gone two years now. In the first year, there's just so many people there. And like you said, it's 24 hours a day. Stuff's always going on. After, after the show, we were like, I wonder how many girls got pregnant this weekend. And like, I wonder how many people got murdered and OD'd on drugs. Like, there's just like so much like raves and hotel rooms. It's it's insane. So do but people like, just go that go there for that or like – because Dragon Con to me just seems like people go if they like dragon themed things. What's the big push for it? I don't know. It's to be honest, it's it's really unique because it's downtown Atlanta and there's like three different buildings. So like the vendors are in one building, the artists are in one building, the celebrities are in one building. So it's like takes up everything. And last year they moved the artists with the vendors. But there's like a lot of cosplay and I mean I really don't know what the draw is. It, like, as far as what I'm into, when, like I said, Chicago Comic Con was my favorite because there's a lot of shopping stuff to buy. Uh, there's a lot of board games, leather dealers, like really weird stuff. Uh, nothing super cool. The uh, Artist Alley, though, is really neat. It's probably one of the best ones that I've been to if you're into, like, buying art. Like, a lot of really good stuff there. Very cool, very cool. Um, the, for Dragon Con, I mean the the biggest selling point is the party I mean, yeah I, I think that that's that's really all that that there really is hmm. um or not all that there really is but i think that that's like the the focal point if you will of the weekend 
Um, but uh, speaking of it's our, also four days too, isn't it? Yeah, it is yeah. a fourth time. Um, is it the Thursday or the Monday that they go the fourth day? Monday, Monday? which is weird. Yeah, it's kind of unique in that sense. Cause, yeah, because it's that's the labor. Usually, that's the day that people get off. I think so. That's probably just, why they do it. Yeah. 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 They want to keep partying. Yeah. <laughs> And speaking of uh, the party and everything, we, I don't know if you guys know this, but the Crown, the Crown Point where we're staying has a rooftop pool. So, like, Are you serious? That's yeah. awesome. Yes. So That's really cool. But the pool doesn't open until Labor Day, I believe. What? That's yeah. not cool. Not Julie, you failed us again. Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Memorial Day? Is that in May? I can't remember which one's which. Yeah, I think it's Memorial Day's in May. No, I got to look. Yeah. Yeah, Labor Day is in September, August. Yeah, that makes sense. Like that. Yeah, yeah. I get those two confused as well. It's it confuses the crap out it's, of me. It's a Monday off. That's all. Like, yeah, that's what it is. This coming up weekend for for Easter, I have Friday off and Monday off and nothing to do. I have nothing to do. I should just like go see Josh or something. I don't know. Be fun. I'm already coming out there next. You know, I'm actually doing a high altitude balloon launch on Saturday, so you should totally come. I don't know about that. <laughs> Where is that the one that's in like way west uh, Nebraska? Is that the one uh, in Ashland? Yeah, at the Strategic Air and Space Museum. That's not west, but that works. Yes, it is. Ashland's like I mean, southwest. It's it's south of me. It's west of you. Well, it's. I don't think it's relevant. Anyway, Just talking about it. <laughs> um, what time are you doing that? Um, well, now I'm taking Andrew's time here, but, uh, I believe it's in, we're doing a morning launch and I'm leading the chase vehicle. So, uh, it'll be kind of fun. We're doing a practice run because, uh, the eclipse is coming through Grand Island, Nebraska this summer. Yeah. Um, so you'll have like full lunar eclipse or That's solar not eclipse. Until August. I know. So we're just prepping for it. We're going to test out the live video feed that we'll have. Uh, like a bunch of people are given the people I work with a tons tons of free equipment to test out and use so we can make sure it works at high altitude. So um, I'm Josh, your everyday nerd. Uh, I'm going to bring Charlie and I'm going to chase with you. I'll see That's if fine. we can do that. Uh, so I'm looking at up crown point right now. So continue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, back to Andrew. <laughs> yes, please. I'm still here, guys. <laughs> um, I see some things for for those of you in the podcast. He has a uh, are listening in your background. You have some photos or some artwork. It looks like are those stuff that you've done? No, uh, those are some Universal Monsters by uh, Tom Whalen, and then uh, Dave Perillo did The Simpsons. I don't know if you can see, like, kind of here. If I'm pointing right, like towards the wall, facing that way. I did those, but let me turn my computer i hope i don't unplug it but i got like all kinds of oh, stuff wow. yeah, yeah his, his walls are filled with stuff <laughs> yeah and a proton pack that's my jam oh, yeah i saw photos of you <laughs> in uh the ghostbuster gear yeah yeah are you part of but, that ghostbusters crew or well here's the story behind that ghostbusters is my jam it's like my one all-time favorite thing and then i finally like broke down and bought it and I was telling some friends, and they're like, oh, that's cool. Are you going to, you know, be, like, with the local Ghostbusters chapter? I'm like, no, it's for myself to, like, dress up whatever I want to. <laughs> so, there you go. so, no. Oh, wow. All right, so, do you I'm, any... so, I'm the super nerd. So, there you go. Yeah. Do you have you any plans that? to do that? To join the chapters? or No, I've, uh, I've befriended some of them. They've bought stuff from me, uh, the local chapter, and uh, they've invited me to some stuff that they've done, but like they got rained out. So they still did it, but I'm like, I don't want mine to get wet. So I didn't, you know, I just didn't go, but you know, like I'd do a parade cool. with them maybe like down the line or something. Cool. That's like, that's, that's so funny. Cause like there's a bunch of times where I've been like just regular dressed up and I'm like, I don't want to go outside cause I don't want to get wet. <laughs> I don't want my equipment to get wet. It won't work anymore. Um, it's a fusion reactor. On I know, this right? I know, like, right? You can't just get that wet. Yeah, you know, really. Did you, your website said uh, 150 plus times for Ghostbusters, right? 
Something like that, probably, yeah. And two, not so much. Yeah, but I love two too, man. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, I wasn't sure that I was going to like it. And uh, um, what's her bucket from Saturday Night Live made, made it for me. Like, Oh, you're, that's technically Ghostbusters 3, Drew, that you're talking about. Oh, man. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. Ghostbusters 2 is the one with the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, and yeah. Vigo. Vigo. You've seen that one, right? Yes, I've seen, yeah. With All the right. baby. No, I liked the new one, too, uh, with the chicks and stuff. It was, it was funny. I thought anything, it was great. Anything Ghostbusters, like, I'm down for. Yeah. I thought it was a little overdue, but I definitely think that they pulled it off. Oh, but, yeah, for um, sure. That's it my was, own It thing. was kind of a shame, though, that, like, all the hate towards it, like, ruined its chances for anything, you know? Uh, I mean, I guess it bombed in theaters because everybody's butthurt about it, but whatever. It's sad that the mat like just because of the internet the mass is just like ruined a movie yeah i mean it, it actually the internet thing does work because the the recent movie uh, ghost in the shell mm-hmm. i was very surprised how many people weren't in the theater a lot really? of people were trying to boycott that because of the whitewashing for the, the asian thing and it was so i was like one of five people on the friday it opened mm-hmm. in the theater now nah, it wasn't the middle of the day compared to or three o'clock actually, but you know it was in the middle of the day compared to at night. But uh, yeah. I actually don't know how that did. Probably people just up. their people's opinions are just awful, and it's like they just ruin things. I don't know why people can't just go and enjoy something. It's like if you don't like it, that's fine, but you know, don't ruin it for everybody else. I'm so curious yeah. as to what Drew's just dying at laughing over here. Uh, you know the white white the Asian thing. <laughs> Yeah, they'll just cut off whitewashing and just was like the Asian thing. <laughs> Did you not hear me say whitewashing? No, you said it. It's just like you like kind of like abruptly ended the word whitewashing, the Asian thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's. Even, I don't even know if that's worse or better. <laughs> Four white know. guys talk about whitewashing and Asian culture. <laughs> I didn't know that's what this podcast was about, guys. Come on. Well, we had that last two weeks ago, I think. Three weeks ago. Uh, yeah. When we all went to go see the movie. Yeah. yeah. Whenever the how, movie was, came. how was it, by the way? I, the show. I liked it a lot. I mean, visually, it's a nice movie. Um, Great movie visually. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the soundtrack was nice. Um, I mean, I think Scarlett Johansson did a good job playing a robot. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. I did not like it. Oh, you didn't? No, but I could not tell you why. Mm. All I know is I thought the everything was well done as far as like you know uh, visually. Um, I thought the storyline was okay. I guess nothing spectacular, but nothing nothing uh, you know mm. too too bad. Um, and uh, I thought Charlotte Johansson did a fine job acting. Just it was I found myself for the first time ever checking Facebook or checking my phone mm. because I was just sitting there like. This is very boring. I feel like I'm the only person that was like that for Rogue One. I didn't really like Rogue One all that much. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, Keith, it was nice having you on the show. Guys, I'm going to need you guys to cut that off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that out. Yeah. Like all these people that are listening. Like, we have a lot of listeners that are going to go to Planet Comic Con. So they're like, oh are you the guy gosh. that said you didn't like Rogue One? <laughs> I'll tell you this. It's definitely one. I'm going to have to watch it again. But on my initial watching, I, I something about it was just off to me. Uh, I think I was going in wanting and expecting a Star Wars movie and it wasn't a Star Wars movie. It was like a war movie and that's fine. And also I've never said this about a movie before ever. It's never bothered me, but the character development was really bad. I thought like it was rushed. she, she, She was cool. She was cool, but there wasn't really anything to her. The guy, I didn't like him at all. And, like, the only cool people were uh, the robot, and then, to me at least, and then the blind dude. But I'm going to have to watch it again. Uh, no, I definitely get what you're saying. What would you feel about, uh, so, like, as far as the new Star Wars themes, what would you feel about uh, Episode 7? Oh, I loved, I loved Episode 7. Yeah. Like, I was so pumped for that, and I thought it delivered. I don't disagree with people saying that it was, like, a rehash of uh, four but that didn't bother me. I felt like they needed to do that to get people like 
reintroduced and back into it and we'll be like, Hey guys, it's exactly. okay. You need to get people but, like, like hold on. Or as far as the, the character development, you need them to be, um, to, to kind of believe the character or kind of be like, you love that character. And yeah, uh, yeah. I think it did that, but it was good. And yeah, I'm gonna have to watch Rogue one again. I think that's it. Yeah, I'm trying to look up stats for that ghost in the shell. They spent 110 million on it, but I'll, I'll be very surprised if they actually got that back. You know, like I haven't seen it yet, but I think I it's, it's you watch the trailer and you're like, it looks cool. It could be good, but it's going to bomb. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like it had that written all over it. Cause I think a lot of people aren't going to really get, get what it is. You know, I think the problem, the problem with it is that the, it was specifically the, the whitewashing boycott. Um, like mm-hmm. the, people who, the people who know about what Ghost in the Shell is and know, like, you know, the story and have watched the anime, you know, are going, uh, half of them are upset that they whitewashed it, quote unquote. And so they're not seeing it in theater specifically for that reason. I mean, I get that, but like they're making it for, you know, our audiences, you know, so like it makes sense to me why they would do that because like she has star, but there are a lot of cool uh, Asian Americans and Asians who like, like that chick from uh, Pacific Rim, like she was cool. I know people mentioned her, but I get why they did it. It doesn't bother me, but I can see why it would bother people. I, I, I get both sides. Like you're right. I agree. It's, yeah. it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't type of situation. I think it would, they could have with this movie because I, it wasn't, at least it, I'm in my understanding, it wasn't good or bad. It was just a, a movie that like, it wasn't like the movie to see. It was mm-hmm. like a manga or a, or anime, something that was just a run of the mill show. I mean, Ghost in the Shell, I'm not really familiar with as far as, you know, in Japan, is it that popular to make a movie out of? Does anybody know? I mean, uh, it only made 19 million the opening week, ooh. which is, you know, obviously that's uh, not that's like what barely just under 20 percent uh what they what they put into it but they'll get, they'll get it back in the long run but it kind of sucks um so the the one of the things that i thought was interesting is they actually uh somebody actually did a uh like a street q a on in in japan uh for the movie and basically were like hey this movie's coming out people are angry that Scarlett Johansson's playing it. How do you feel about it? And they were just like, we, I mean, she looks like she's doing, she looks like she's doing the character just fine. You know, like one of the biggest points is like, she, she's probably a really good actress. Like that's like the point that all the people in the Japanese street Q and a said, they're like, she's probably a good actress. That's probably why they picked her. And they were, they were just not at all, not at all upset at, the fact that even their culture or their, you know, somebody of their uh, ethnicity was overstepped or whatever we're going to call it, whitewashed. It's only something that's viewed in America. I mean, a lot of people have this, I don't want to say, quote unquote, liberal snowflake ideal, but it's honestly, uh, some of these, some of these people have this idea that if it's not, you know, perfectly the way it sh- they think it should be, then it should just be, it's garbage. It's throw it away. And I hate to say it the way I did, but whatever. Um, Don't give a shit. I, I just, a right, real quick question. Andrew, when was the last time you've seen uh, Blade Runner before? Well, I actually watched it. My cat's tail's getting in the way. Sorry. But I actually watched it for the first time, probably in the past, like, four years and uh i watched it once so it's another one i need to get back to but uh yeah so it was probably about two years ago one of the things i compared ghost in the shell to as far Mm -hmm. as like movie looks like the way that blade runner looked like the first time i saw it like I, i i looked at it and i'm like okay this movie like right after a new hope came out this movie came out and like the visual effects that were in that movie were so good. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it almost made me like motion sick to watch. Like when I watched, cause we watched uh, for the philosophy class I'm in, we actually watched Blade Runner uh, philosophy club on a big screen TV. 
That's and cool. like it physically was like, oh, Tommy got sick. But same visuals, like just awesome, like futuristic visuals in Ghost in the Shell mm-hmm. that I think they did a really good job with. Huh. Um, that whoever the animators were, the visual effects people on that team, uh, I hope they go on to make many, many more movies because they did a stellar job. You know, it's it's sad. I don't. I can't speak for Ghost in the Shell because I haven't seen it yet. But you know, you got Blade Runner. Uh, like you said, it came out after What a New Hope. That like everything looks so good, and then like there's movies that are coming out like now that like it's kind of looks like garbage. Like it's just everything's like so CGI based. Like where it looks like has a sheen to it. Like I I call it PlayStation graphics. You know what I mean? And then you have like the original Alien where they use a guy in a costume. Like that looks so good, but I don't know. Like I think. I think the force awakens like helped out with like the practical yeah. effects stuff. Well, one of the things in rogue one is like, they hardly used any CGI for yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And I a lot of that. like the, like the pilot stuff they did for rogue one and for the force awakens were shot in like life size cockpits mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. giant monitors all around to yeah. show like the scenery. So I thought that was that really, you could tell a difference in how those yeah. movies are made. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you get rid of that claymation stuff. The- yeah, it def- uh, the new Star Wars movies definitely look awesome. And I mean, I think it's going to hopefully it'll be a game changer because when you can realize you can put a little bit more effort for about the same same or less amount of money, you know, just make it look good, you know? Cool, cool, cool. And then people have, you know, props to take home. Yeah, yeah, there true. you go, like miniatures and stuff. Yeah, I got this flash drive with the first uh, scene I recorded. No, no, that doesn't apply. Yeah, that's not. Here's the here's the three D modeling of all these characters. Yeah, I printed it out. <laughs> um, so, oh, sorry, I was going to move on to other works. Are you? You got a question, Drew? No, I was just going to. Um, yeah, I keep going on and ask if uh, any other cons he was planning on going to since we kind of were talking about oh, I have one thing to mention but... real quick and this is not a point at Drew I'm not trying to make fun of you Drew but you look like a possum in a hole and I shine a light in the hole and your eyes just like <gasps> what's going on? That's how it looks. It's called the glasses reflection <laughs> I don't know what that is, guys. What are you talking about? <laughs> Three fourths of the people on the podcast have that problem right now. <laughs> I can't. Once I get a better camera and put contacts in, we'll be okay. There you go. Um, so yeah, uh, what's what's the what's the next oh, question you guys yeah. got? So what I was asking was, uh, are there any cons that we didn't talk about, like Dragon Con or Motor City or Planet Comic Con that you are are planning on going to this year? Yeah, I have, I have uh, I think I've done five so far, and I have like 20 more that I'm doing. I usually do 20 to 25 a year. Cool. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, don't ask me what they are. Yeah. I, can't rem- I can't remember all of them. I, I go to so many of these, like I'm like, well, did I do this here, or was that there? You know, it's just, it's hard to keep up with. Well, you should uh, definitely try and make your way out to Okamagon. Um, now, where's, the, where's that at? That's in our hometown of Omaha. Okay. Is it a pretty pretty big one? Uh, it's on its third year now. Uh, okay. Uh, it's not – I don't want to necessarily say it's big. We had 50,000. Is that – That's good. That's actually really good. I had 50,000 over the course of the whole weekend. Yeah, that's good. Um, it, it is a little bit smaller, I would say, but it was definitely impactful. Well, you know, like, even if it's small, like, if they – you can bring the people in. I mean, that changes everything, you know? I mean, I've been to some killer small conventions before. So well, the, the best part about uh, I mean, as a vendor, the best part about small convention is that there's less people to buy. Mm-hmm. From. So there's a, there's an upside there. If you will. Yeah. Um, but no, it's a, it's our local con. They basically have uh, once one of the exhibit halls is the exhibitor space. And then they have, um, the exhibitor and the artist space. And then they basically uh, put, um, they do a cosplay uh, contest and do a, a couple uh, panelist rooms. Um, and they have, uh, they have the, like the cosplayers in the back in the back of the exhibitor space too. Yeah. Hmm. Josh, 
That's where they had the cosplayers in there too, right? Like yeah, yeah. they did like do the labyrinth the in the background. Yeah, hmm. yeah, they did a parade, cool. like a red carpet uh, cosplay thing, the first year, and that was awesome. Um, there was a lot more for top photographers um, the first year, and then the second year it was all just like one guy basically got like the official con photo stuff and he does a great job he's a local person here too as well um but yeah that's a really nice small but big convention i like okay. it a lot i'll um, check that out like i drive everywhere so it might be pretty yeah, long it drive. Be like a 14 hour drive yeah I'd yeah like it, it, it it's hard sometimes to uh go so far you know when especially when i don't know what to expect but i mean i'm gonna make it out there i'm looking for always looking for new shows to go to i'll pick you up when i go out there <laughs> there you go that works um, I did see on your page that you worked on some pretty big named, you know, uh, project. That's ex- um, exactly what I was about to ask. Yeah, H&R Block, U.S. Bank, Cartoon Network, Sony Pictures, just to name a few. Mm-hmm. Um, what, uh, I mean, how do you get in with those guys and what have you done for them? Like something that we could probably recognize. Well, quick sidebar. I want to apologize for my website being so uh, lacking right now. I'm in the middle of redoing my website. So like putting projects up there and stuff. And so right now, it's supposed to be done in January, but I've gotten so much freelance work, like I haven't had time to finish it. So I need my website to be done to get client work, but I'm getting it too much of it to like even finish it. So it's a quick sidebar, but well, that's good. It's a good problem to have. Good problem, a, yeah. I can't, I can't complain, but I'm like, I gotta get my website done. Can I get my website done? So I'm gonna be doing that this week. But anyways, back to your question. Uh, a lot of those clients that I have done for, I mean. Uh, going to these conventions, like it really gets my work out there and like, you'll never know who you run into. Uh, and a lot of my uh, client work comes from the conventions, uh, just them coming to my booth, they either buying something, liking my stuff, taking my card. Uh, so that's where I get a lot of that. Some of it, like the Cartoon Network and the Sony Pictures, I did those through uh, Gallery 1988 in LA. It was just like officially licensed shows and I got some stuff officially licensed. So I can add them to my client list, but uh, yeah, like the H and R block stuff that like from the comic conventions and stuff like that. Very nice. Sounds pretty nice. Yeah, it is great. Yeah. Know, it's nice. It's nice to have like legit clients, you know, like some people are like, Hey, will you put this dog on my shirt for me? I'm like, uh, you know, like they don't pay good and it's like just some random thing, but it's nice to have good stuff to show on your website. Yeah. Very good. Do you do um, t-shirts or do you just do prints or like what's your main oh, I do like main client stuff? The client stuff, it really varies. I've done uh, gig posters, t-shirts, uh, web design, logo design, just spot illustrations. I've done a couple card games uh, uh, for Looney Labs. They do Flux. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Like that's something on the website, but it's not on there now. But Yeah, I'm just trying to – I'm getting like uh, Facebook ads from them, so I'm kind of just – understanding yeah, yeah. what they are now yeah so uh just kind of a little whatever comes my way there's not a lot that i'll you know not do unless it's just like i said i, I try to stay away from small time stuff you know because there's just so much of that going around yep definitely definitely um do you guys have any other questions that need to stand out at least to to me well josh got tons josh is just ready yeah so uh i know i had to like slowly move my mouse over to <laughs> unmute myself um because I don't have macros very well on the Mac, which is ironic now that I'm saying it out loud. Irony. Uh, so uh, my question that we wrote down here, actually was one of Drew's questions, but I kind of asked it. Um, I want to know, like, who's your favorite, like, like, I mean, obviously this is sexy nerd science. We're all kind of nerds here. Who's your favorite superhero? Favorite superhero? Oh, man. That's a tough like, one. You can give us from like just a cool stance or you could be like favorite superhero I've drawn or Man. like who's your you favorite know, artist. As far as like superheroes, I'm more into like movies and television more. You know what I mean? But like are, go- are the Ghostbusters superheroes, right? Well, they kind of superheroes? Yes, I would say so. <laughs> totally work. They saved well, the day. I- if I had to pick, yeah, if I had to pick, like, superhero number one, it'd probably be Batman. You know, Bat- you Batman's well, my guy. That's why my question was, who's your favorite hero? Because yeah. I didn't want to limit it to superheroes, like, comics, and okay. I want to be like... Well, yeah. Ghostbusters, 
all around comics, like superhero. Well, Batman's not even a superhero, but I'm <laughs> so, but still Batman. I um, just thought of something crazy, like a Ghostbusters supernatural crossover. That'd like, probably work. How, how awesome would that be? Like Sam and Dean, and then like original Ghostbusters. Oh, that'd be great. Like, and they're like, one of these guys is trying to like hunt demons and stuff. And the other people are like, no, it's just a ghost. Like, shoot a laser at it. Like, shoot. Yeah, just, <laughs> just like, lasers. I got my salt gun. Like, it's called burn a proton pack. Come on, man. Get it right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you can make lasers out of protons. Well, I don't know. I don't know the science <laughs> behind it. I just know what they call it. That's what Josh. Right. That's what you do. You shoot the protons at the atoms. That's how you. That's how you figure it out. I don't know the name of it. I just know the sound it makes when it kills a ghost. Um, there you go. I do have a a question, and it's just a really person on a personal note. Can I? Okay. When are when are you going to get more of these uh, pizza underwear pins? Hold on. I got He's them. Got them on, I got them. <laughs> I have like a bunch point. of them somewhere. Yeah, I just ordered some. I just got them in. Awesome. Did I restock them in the website? Are they still? It still says sold out. Still says sold out. Yeah, that's we uh, got an emergency. I'm gonna fix that right now. Awesome. Um, just to give you guys a heads up too, I know I don't know if for those of you who listen on our podcast, we do record on you know earlier in the week. In this case, we record on Sundays. Um, right now, but uh, if you guys are familiar with the NHL, um, the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, played their final oh. game in the uh, Joe Louis Arena this this uh, tonight today. Uh, they did win four to one against the New Jersey Devils, uh, but uh, that was their last game ever. No more games. Very sad for Detroit, at least. Um, not sure that's, if you're a hockey fan, Andrew, but that's, uh, that's just a Gillette, though, right? Gillette. Joe or, Lewis. Joe, Joe Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. He's a famous boxer. <laughs> Yeah, um, there we're gonna go. Yeah, it's not that much better when we're going to the Little Caesars fucking arena afterward. Um, <laughs> so I mean, you're making a joke, of, but it's like not that hockey, hockey. Yeah, um, but I just wanted to kind of bring that up real quick because that was kind of a sad day in Detroit here for the uh, last day. Um, the uh, Ducks beat the the Blackhawks uh, four to I think four to one. Yeah, I said Blackhawks. <laughs> that's funny too but like sad day in detroit when the hockey team stops playing in joe lewis arena not the like the fact that like flint still doesn't have clean water or like tons that's of not detroit. poverty that's and... not detroit that's that's somewhere else no. No, <laughs> tons of poverty the city's falling apart like it's getting better but it's still falling apart in other places but the red wings sad it's, it's sad a dark day, day in detroit well, freaking when uh, Mike Illich died, the guy who owned the Red Wing, Little Caesars Pizza, the, the Tigers, a bunch of other stuff, when he passed away, the city just shut down. Like, oh, we're taking a day. Yeah, he, he was like the Henry Ford of Detroit again. <laughs> the Henry, Henry Ford was the Henry Ford of Detroit. I think you're getting confused. Um, but, no, he was he was Detroit royalty, uh, Illich was. Um, but that brings me to a question for you, Andrew. Uh I'm not really sure how many teams, you know, uh, good sport, not good sports teams, uh, how many major league sports teams there are in Kentucky. But uh, what do you uh, what do you do out there? Sports wise, I do not keep up with sports. Uh, like I keep up with the uh, Kentucky Wildcats occasionally if they're doing well. But other than that, I have no idea, man. It's it's hard because a lot of the sports and the nerd them of of people don't really cross over that much. Occasionally yeah, they yeah. will, sometimes, yeah. but uh, no, it is difficult. Yeah. Kentucky's hero is the Colonel. KFC, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I just, I just, <laughs> if you had like a Colonel Sanders arena, like I would just die. <laughs> we do. It's, we do. Is it? It's it's, it's not called the Colonel Sanders arena in Louisville. It's the KFC Yum KFC Center. Center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yum, like Yum Center. Yum, yeah. Yum oh is God. the corporation that owns KFC. Yeah, and oh, I think that makes ta- more sense. Taco, Taco Bell and two, right? Yeah, yeah. And Pepsi uh, as well. Pepsi yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the under the umbrella um, corporation. Under the yum. Under the yum corporation. Under, under the umbrella. 
Under the umbrella. <laughs> I'm um, do you guys want to move on to the science news now? Um, I had an I had another um, <clears throat> uh, question. I was it was it? I know we kind of touched on this, uh, and I, this was what was it that got you into drawing? Not into just like, drawing. Yeah. Not just like doing it from was it was it the like the uh, greeting card company or was it like a previous thing that you did prior to the greeting card company that just kind of uh, I've I've been drawing since like first grade uh, like just doing art all the time uh, I had a buddy who's really big into art and we kind of did that together and then also my mom. Uh, drew and she painted and stuff uh and she helped out she got me uh some like anatomy uh illustration stuff and i you know worked with that and then i had a lot of like uh drawing stuff out of comics you know but yeah i've always done art all the way up, up until now there's never not a time that i wasn't doing it very cool mm-hmm. very cool so yeah i think we can go on science now. okay so yeah, we uh, we normally do sexy, nerdy, and sciencey news. So let's let's move on to the sciencey news. Um, I don't know if Josh and Drew had a chance to look at it, but uh, what I kind of want to mention here is um, there was a story a few years ago, probably, um, about a computer algorithm for ads. I think it was Target is the link I posted. Target ended up sending this young woman um, coupons for like baby stuff, baby clothes, baby formula, diapers. And she was confused why she was getting this stuff. And so she ended up going to you know Target or her dad went to Target or something. They started yelling at her like, why are you getting all this? Uh, you know, why are we getting these baby stuff? You know, my daughter's a good daughter. And then they find out later that she is pregnant. And, uh, you know, he had to, he, he ended up apologizing to Target. I'm not sure the exact how it went, but the point what I'm trying to make is, um, technology as a whole is growing so quick and everything that you enter, especially with new laws in Congress just passed recently, you know, people being able to collect your data and, and ISPs and whatnot, they can take all this data that you go online, even now on Facebook. Like I just saw that, what is it? Flux that we talked about earlier. You know, it's something that I've clicked on or maybe interested in. And since I've been viewing your stuff, maybe that's what, you know, clicked it through. Mm-hmm. Um, why maybe, with all this different ad stuff, what do you think is the future of, um, you know, ads in general, or do you think that, you know, companies and corporations are going too much into our privacy, even with the internet as open and free as it is. And I kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion on that. Well, isn't, isn't that the monster, the cookies monster that you need to like clear all the time? Basically. I don't think clearing it though. I think clearing it clears up space, but I mean, once you're online, like the cookies just do what they want. Like, especially if you give permission, yeah. you, you can clear also some link to your IP address too. So. Oh, can you? Well, also yeah. anything yeah. that has a S on it, uh, they encrypt any data that you get, but they still have the right to um, utilize that data the best mm-hmm. you can. They give you that in the, in the terms of service. Yeah. You know, yeah. When you first select their Google, you know, does it, uh, Facebook does it, you know, any, any major site you've been to. That's crazy. Biggest lie of the internet. I have read the terms of service. I've got I've got a couple of crazy, I guess, cookie stories. If you want to hear them, uh, does any of you guys play Pokemon Go? Yes, all yes. the time. We okay, all, good. So I'm not the only one. My still t-shirt playing. literally says, "Don't mind me. There I'm just catching yeah, yeah. invisible monsters." So. Uh, quick sidebar: How many Pokemon do you guys have? Oh, game? I don't know. We got we haven't done this in a while, guys. Well, anyways, while you're looking at that, so I was in Independence, Ohio a couple weeks ago, uh, which is kind of, which is about 15 miles south of Cleveland, kind of in the middle of nowhere. That's where I was staying for the Cleveland show. And I was going through my Pokemon, and I didn't have a Lapras yet. So I was like, huh, wonder how we can make that happen. So I Googled how to catch Lapras or how to hatch Lapras, and I think it said something like 300 out of 10,000 eggs hatched will get you one. So I was like, okay, that's crap. And they're like, they're really almost impossible to catch. So I did that next morning in Independence, Ohio, nowhere around water or anything. Eight in the morning, I woke up, turned on Pokemon Go, 
guess what popped up at my hotel? A sand what? trail. That's crazy, right? Like they had to have been like watching me. Like that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like I don't know. It's just. Have you guys got a lapras yet or anything? No, uh, I I hatched one. Uh, luckily, um, right after that Japanese um, uh, event that went on in J- in Japan. Mm. Uh, but uh, but I've never had something like that. But my sister, this is something Not funny. To be confused with the Japanese event that happened in South Africa. Shut up. What? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, so the Japanese event that happened in Japan. Oh, yeah, that so, one. Gotcha. Not to be confused. We're talking about a Japanese anime South show Africa. from in the United States. It can happen anywhere, guys. Um, oh what I'm God. trying to say is my sister, she'll be on her phone and she'll, she'll, we'll be talking about something. We'll be talking about, you know, a sports team or whatever. And then she'll put her phone down, not Google anything. And then get ads for whatever we were talking about earlier. Seriously, later. and That's she's so she's weird. recorded it in multiple times of this happening. I've wow. never had that happen. I've googled it and had ads from the Google things I've done, but just from talking near her phone, it blows yeah. my mind. My, uh, so here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say it's the reverse. I bet the phone. She sees the things on the phone, but does not consciously recognize that she sees them on the phone. Then she talks to you about them, thinking that it's just casual conversation. And then she goes back and realizes, oh, I'm seeing this on my phone, which is an even creepier thing because that means that the ad companies are able to infiltrate your basic conversation without you knowing it until mm. after the fact. It could be. Could yeah. be. My other story is uh, this happened a couple of years ago. It was, I was, it was one of those things like Yahoo News, like, hey, if you say this to Siri, something funny will happen, you know, like one of those. So I was like, I'm going to do it. So I did that. And then it worked. And then I was talking to Syria for a little bit, like, you know, saying shut up and like cursing at her and stuff, you know, just getting the funny responses. The next day, the voice actress of Siri followed me on Twitter. I said, what? <laughs> so I don't know. Those are just two weird stories. I guess just complete coincidences. But. Um, That's have, odd. Thanks for the conversation we had yesterday. It was a pleasure talking with you. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> My buddy, uh, Scott, he said, uh, I made a phone call this morning. Uh, and mentioned uh, apple cider vinegar might be good for you. And when I got uh, home, uh, I checked my email. Uh, like a, sometimes your email doesn't populate like until you get to Wi-Fi or whatever. And he said, I got home and checked my email at four, th- four, four or so in the afternoon. And uh, the screenshot is 426. Uh, 20 minutes earlier, he'd gotten apple cider vinegar best – uh, best weight loss secret yet. I thought you were going to say you're going to go home and it was in your fridge. Yeah, he or, or he got it <laughs> delivered to his house. Yeah, it was on the table when I walked in my house. Yeah. Yeah, he went home and populated his email. With a thank you, or you're like, you're a welcome card on it. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> weight loss. Nice. I kind of want to just like use my girlfriend's Target card and go to Target and be like, condoms and safety pins and then see if in like nine months she starts getting baby stuff like just buy oh, those, those two things oh man. <laughs> nice condoms and safety that, pins real classy just, <laughs> exactly <laughs> they're gonna be like i think something's up here guys like yeah. it doesn't take a genius algorithm to tell you <laughs> there's probably gonna be a baby in the works yeah the uh let's let's go to the pokemon stuff though i know that in, in my Pokedex, I've caught 172, and I've seen 183. Um, I have not caught a lot of the new stuff. Um, I have, unfortunately, hadn't had a day to play that yet, or play, like, hardcore since the new stuff came out. Weak. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Dale, you've gotten more than, uh, than I have uh, recently then at this point, because I think I was ahead of everybody for a while. What are the numbers? Come on, guys. What do we got? I got one. I just wear this shirt. Ironically, I don't play anymore. Shut up. Oh. He cheats anyway. Oh, don't don't weird. talk about Josh. He he likes to use the 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 program that lets you walk anywhere. What um, is, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's a cheater. He's a spoofer. Oh man. So my caught is one forty four, and my scene is one sixty one. Oh, one rum pineapple juice. No, uh, yeah, no. I I was ahead out for a while of everybody. Well, I don't. I've never been so good at a game in my life. I'm at two fourteen caught, damn, and two nineteen seen. 
I almost have all of the original 150. Uh, I'm missing, like, obviously, like, the region-specific ones and then, like, you know, like, the birds and stuff. And then mm. I'm almost done with the second ones, too. Do you, Killing it. Do you ever go to South Florida? South Florida? Uh, no. There's a coral reef one that you can get in South Florida. I can't remember the guy's name, but he's uh, he's uh, regional specific. This guy? Yeah, that's him. Hey-o. I no. got him. I got him in Pensacola. Oh gosh, dang! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hold on, um, they're still doing. Uh, I'm looking at these, and I have apparently seen a uh, fair alligator. Okay, yeah, I, have, I have him. I don't remember seeing him. He's probably at a gym. Yeah, he's probably uh, at a gym you went through. That's yeah. the problem. Is I, I cannot stand that. But yeah, these, I don't. I don't really like that either. That's where a lot of my those, scenes come from. Because my my scene versus caught was a hundred percent before they started doing that. And I liked that. I liked that the numbers were the same, and that it like just got all whack. But I'm like, I've never I've seen caught a hundred and twenty two. Nice. I don't like that they were the same because then it showed me that if I if I like one fled, I was like, motherfucker, you're reminding me every day that I missed one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh man, you probably need to cut that out too, so people don't think I'm a huge Pokemon nerd. <laughs> oh no no! When, when did they start moving to the side? Oh, the, just like I think the uh, one point. I don't remember. Just recently though. What is it? They start moving they, around they can, when they, when Gen two came like, out. Yeah, and just move around. Yeah, some will some will go like you know like move all around, and then some will do a bunch of other stuff. That's why you, you have to use your you have to use your uh, slow candy, which is the uh, pink pineapples or the pink uh, bananas. The, the bananas, yeah. The pineapples give you more candies. Yeah. Which I don't. I I, I use the I don't use the the pink uh, bananas for anything. I don't I use. Mean, I, I just use the pineapples. I, yeah. throw, I throw the bananas away. Um, yeah, me too. Harley's the last one that that's caught anything on my phone. Actually, my two year old. She, uh, she's the Pokemon. She always says Pokemon. I play Pokemon. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think uh, that the they, the computer algorithms are getting very in depth, and uh, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I'm not really sure. Do you think you're by yourself, Drew? You keep looking behind you, like somebody. Is it me. is it the computer out? Is it cookies? Is cookies <laughs> in there with you? Cookies is in here with me. No. <laughs> Well, uh, Tasha's playing this game on Xbox, and uh, I didn't know if she was cooking or not. Um, but I think she, I think she's just going through and getting all of the achievements. So she's searching how to do each one of those achievements on this game. Cool. Which is, in my opinion, awesome because it's been forever since she's played a game. So anyway, um, but yes, back to the algor algor algor. Algae rhythms thing. Um, I do think that uh, they are getting out of hand, personally, because uh, literally every search I make, I see an ad on Facebook. But let me let me rebuttal with that is you also have um, series uh, almost a personal assistant nowadays. You have Google Assistant. You have this new Samsung Eight thing. It's called uh, Belt or Bexy. I don't remember what it's called. But you have all these assistants who utilize your you know, your data from your emails, utilize your data from your searching to actually help you in things. Uh, Do you think that that's also down the same path or that's a separate path? And where do you draw the line with privacy? Well, it's all supposed to help, isn't it? Like supposedly like make things easier, easier for you, but I don't, it's weird. You know, it's, it's just weird to like Google something and then it pops up on Instagram and like to Google something on my computer and then go and it's on my phone too, you know? It's I love just, that. I love uh, that completely. Yeah. I, I um, search on my computer something and then like, or like a word or anything, and then I'll, you know, go home or go to work or, or use my phone. And then I'll be like, oh yeah, I just recently searched that. And I'll go to my recent searches on mm-hmm. a different device and it'll tell me. Well, so, I'm talking like, if I'm like looking up, DVD, like this is the DVD I want on my computer, and then like an ad for it is on my Instagram on my phone. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, I don't know, it's weird. Well, yeah. it's it's almost one of those things where it's like at that point you've already bought the DVD, so why? Yeah, are, why? Yeah, why, I don't like that. 
Yeah. So I'll, I'll want to buy something, something like a big ticket item. Like I've been looking up cars recently and they come up with like a Ford ad. I was like, why would I want to buy this when I'm already on your website? I don't understand. Why are you yeah. trying to sell me that? Yeah. Um, like I, I don't, I use Siri for dumb things. I don't necessarily ever use her for like actual productive things. Uh, you know, uh, Siri, you know, or, or what is it? Hey, pewter. After you. <laughs> hey, pewter. It's from uh, the Batman. From like the Lego Batman? Batman movie. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is it here? I'll, I'll try it. Hey, pewter. No, nothing. Hey, pewter. <laughs> Welcome home, sir. I have your rom coms queued up, sorted by decade. Oh, dang. I didn't know that works. Pewter. How can I help you, Lego Batman? <laughs> um, I, I can't remember what it was. I think it was Waze that had uh, like voices of like famous people. I think they had uh, voices of uh, the top gear people. I don't know, a bunch of other stuff. We're like, actually running out of time, so I did want to wrap up this conversation. Are you okay with that, Drew? Or? Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, we do have to keep it under a certain amount of time. Um, obviously, we have Andrew Heath as our, our sex nerd this month for April. Um, thank you very much, Andrew, for being on. Yeah. Uh, but before we go, let's go with last week's question of the week. Um, do you think that the Tesla Model 3 should have a traditional dashboard? Are you familiar with the Teslas at all? No. So it's a it's an electric car company mm -hmm. that uh, pretty much make only electric cars. They had yeah, yeah. one little thing, but their main thing That's is... About as, that is about as far as my knowledge goes with the Teslas. <laughs> well, they also have autonomous driving built in with them, very hardcore. They're uh, definitely one of the leading car companies with the best autonomous driving on the market right now. And the newest car they have is for the average driver. Mm -hmm. Most of their cars are, you know, start out at 70,000, you know, 100,000. Really Let's expensive. Let's buy two. Let's buy two. Exactly. Uh, but their Model 3 is for the average user. So their, that base price is um, $35,000 before incentives. So it could even go down to 27, you know, oh. something, you know, within the, within a standard cost of like a, a regular car mm -hmm. uh, with m range of 200, 250 miles. Um, and so the, the question is, do you think that Tesla Model 3 should have a traditional dashboard because their model, their other two models that they have, the S and the X, have a traditional dashboard. They show you miles per hour. They show you other information. The Model 3 has no dashboard. It just has the it has a giant touchscreen um, display on the right where your songs are, where all the information for the vehicle will be in the center console. However, no... Uh, you know, center right behind the, the the steering wheel. Oh man, I'm looking at it right now. That's, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> now uh, we've talked about it in previous episodes, and you should definitely go back and look at it. But the 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 quorum we're having right now is um, with the autonomy becoming greater and greater. Mm -hmm. Will we need that? Because uh, it, it's it's something that the vehicle will do itself. It will know the speed limit of the vehicle. You'll you'll floor on the gas if you have it set up properly and you only go that, you know, 45 miles an hour down the road. Um, yeah. So you can just set it and go. Um, so do you think that it should have a traditional dashboard or do you think it should um, be how I it mean, is? I mean, in the sense that like, if it's going to be more affordable for like more people, I guess, yes. But also it's one of those things like things evolve things change like if that's where we're headed then no probably i guess so a little bit of both <laughs> does that make sense because i mean no definitely i mean like if it's if it's something that's going to go away why keep using it yeah so i guess i'm gonna go with more no on okay this. yeah okay yeah that we, we we kind of agreed on the same thing like i know josh is a big believer that you know we don't need it anymore I'm more of a believer that we still we're in the transition phase yeah, still. Yeah. So we yeah. do need it right now. But even if they eventually, you know, we get to that point where you just kind of sit back and let the car drive itself. Well, how about we go with no, but it comes the decal. <laughs> just a <laughs> peel and stick. You just put a big sticker there just to make you feel better. And when you're ready, just rip it right off. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's nice. But see, like one other thing that I didn't like about it, and you know, we're running out of time here, is that do you know what a HUD is for a vehicle? 
Uh, it's, sounds familiar. It's a device that goes into every car has one, or at least every car has the access to put one in or to utilize one. Um, lets you connect to it to view the car's data or to utilize the car's data. Yeah, so yeah, I could plug yeah, gotcha. in an external one and mount it on my dash if I wanted mm -hmm. to. But that is, this car doesn't even have that. So if I yeah. wanted one, I bought it, I, or bought it, it I, if I bought one, <laughs> no, that's I right. couldn't I even it. add it to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. bought it, it. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess if that would be an option to go with, you know, because I feel like there's a lot of people who wouldn't be comfortable with that. But, the, you know, like, if you look at it now, there's a lot of older people who don't even know how to use, like, like an iPhone. So it's like, it's just changing. Time's changing. Like, that's just something that's going to change, I guess. I am a store manager for AT&T sales team. And mm -hmm. uh, I had an 85 year old guy who was like, I'm tired of my flip phone. I'm going to get a smartphone. Uh -oh. and he's been in like almost every day for like two and a half weeks. Oh, like man. every time he's like, take away my phone. I don't want this. I want to go back <laughs> to my old one. Yeah. But he's getting better. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, uh, that's a uh, good stuff there for that. Um, this week's question of the week uh, uh, is going to kind of hinge off of our science topic uh, about the algorithms and stuff for uh, searching. Um, are ad, ad, ads tracking too much? Oh, are ads tracking us too much? Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I worded it really quickly, but um, generally, you know, our, the ads that we, or the cookies that we accept, the privacy that we, we kind of hinder for utilizing these, these, uh, programs and apps. Um, is it, is, should we, your services, whatever you want to call them. Um, are they, are they invading our privacy too much? Are they, um, not, are they hindering too more than they're helping? Um, or is it just part of life and we should continue on going down that path? Um, you know, let us, let us know what you guys think. Um, either leave it the answers on the website, Facebook, Twitter, we'll find it. I look at it every time we before we record. For sure. Um, the last week's question, I didn't, we didn't. I don't think we posted on any major stuff because we did have some technical difficulties. So um, we apologize for that. Uh, this one will definitely be up on time, and hopefully, um, our last week should be up before this one. Um, if not, again, sorry, we apologize. Um, but any other last minute things, guys? No, I just want to uh, thank Andrew for being on the podcast, and uh, and uh, you know. Uh, definitely uh we'll definitely look forward to uh uh seeing you at planet comic-con uh in kansas city uh are you where, are you staying in a uh any specific hotel or anything yeah um just, i think i'm saying like 10 miles down he's got road. 20 cons he has to think about true well, that, that one's coming up so it's, <laughs> it's it's in the mind it's in the mind <laughs> I should know if we would see him at like one of our, you know, at our hotel or. No, my hotel doesn't have a rooftop pool. If that's what you're asking. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, neither does ours until May 29th. Which are, yeah. you, are you guys staying like downtown, like around yeah. the? Yeah. Right see, across from the con in that little area they have. Yeah. I do that sometimes, but like, it's just easier to stay away, you know, cause I've, I've found that it's hard to find things like, I don't know. My main thing is to like, easy you know easy weekends and like there's no food that's not like super expensive downtown so like i like to be away near other stuff so i usually find like mall areas to stay around and they're a lot more affordable too pizza pizza is the only thing that's affordable around that area mm -hmm. yeah there's a subway quiz nose like there's a lot of like tiny places there yeah i, I made that mistake in uh dc because there's so much expensive stuff. Like I ate Sbarro like all weekend and I was like, Oh my gosh. You go into a mall <laughs> food court to get lunch. No, it, it was just like a Sbarro like, or subway. There's a subway. So like, I think I just like switched oh. between the two, but other than that, it's just like super expensive, like pretentious food. <laughs> I haven't seen a Sbarro outside of a mall food court. I know. Like yeah. 20 years. It was just like its own thing. Oh, must be the regional that they're still on standalone. But, we are out of time today, um, so uh, any, any last-minute bits here or anything? No? Well, from all of us here at Sex and Nerd Science, you guys have a great day. See you guys next week. Make sure to like, subscribe, uh, our page and Andrew's. Um, you know, Andrew Heath Dines, correct? 
We'll have it. We'll have it in the links and post it on that. We'll have links in the doobly doo. No. Uh, I like doobly doos. Links us in the wadulala. In the doobly doo. Those all sound accurate to me. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening. We'll uh, catch you guys next week. Yep. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.